Hello, CSI Golden Eagles. This is a momentous occasion. This is the week after the end of the spring semester, and many of you have graduated. May I just say on behalf of all of us here at CSI and at the library specifically, congratulations. We are very, very proud of you. And this episode is going to be on things you can do after you graduate or after you are done with your spring semester in between semesters to continue your education and continue your research. Like I have said before, we have many resources that we have created so you can access them on demand. But before we get into that, we're going to talk about the CSI Open House a little bit and what we are going to do a little bit in the future. So for many of you who did not know, we just got word that we had around 2,500 to 3,000 attendees at the CSI Community Open House. And at my estimation, we had around 100 people do the mini golf activity at least. So that was a fantastic event, wonderful attendance. I'm very grateful for all of you who attended. It was a great way for us to communicate what we do and how we can help you as well. I also had the opportunity last week to attend with Ross Sampek, the Jerome High School Cinco de Mayo event. A lot of CSI and other college people were there. We had wonderful, um, a wonderful booth from the Boise State University as well, their camp program, which I think is statewide. But we were able to talk to around 70 people at the Jerome High School event. So thank you for coming up and talking to us. We are here for the community. We are here for all of you. And so this is why a little bit, as well as it being after graduation, but that's another reason why I decided to discuss community education and furthering education beyond formal academic classes. Coming up on June 1st, we have our next book club event. And we are going to be reading The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. It promises to be a wonderful book. It's somewhat controversial, but you would, that would definitely be talking about it. We are excited to have that discussion. We have wonderful discussions every time we bring up a book club. So even though it is going to be in the summer, we would ask you to please come and please discuss your opinions and your insights into that book and into other books. Please give requests, but also to us, on what books you would like to see in our book club. We have mostly been talking, we've mostly been reading, you know, gothic romance or historical fiction. So we are excited to have many, many new types of genres, <coughs> excuse me, genres featured in our book club. We're here to help the faculty and students grow closer to each other and learn new things. And no one gets that if you only listen to what you want to listen to or only read what you want to read or etc. So please come to the book club. Please come to future book clubs. We might have a, another expanded mini golf event. We also had a murder mystery a few weeks back and there was a lot of attendance on that. So we might have another murder mystery in the library as well. But please, please come. It's going to be fantastic. Whatever we do, Ross and Allison and Reba and Miranda, they always come up with wonderful ideas and they execute them brilliantly. So I'm very excited for whatever they have next. Now, on to our main topic of the podcast episode for this week. Community education. CSI has many non-credit classes that we offer to the community physically and also online. And their tagline for this is, life is short, learn something new. I know that many, many people, even faculty members, staff members, are going to and have been participating in these community education. So let me read what they have on their website. The CSI Community Education Center offers non-credit enrichment classes for adults across a wide variety of interests in the arts, money and finances, health and fitness, hobbies, and home and garden, to name a few. 
We also offer summer camps for youth, performing arts productions, cultural opportunities, speakers, and more. So you don't even have to register for courses. You can just come to these productions or these different speakers. Again, life is short, learn something new. So what is cool about this is with all of our other classes, we have classes in Twin Falls, our main campus, and also in Jerome, Gooding, and Burley on those extension campuses as well. So if we click on these, at CSI, the Twin Falls campus, we have adult enrichment classes, youth camps and classes, apprenticeships, business and professional development, computers and technology, all these different types of classes. So let's look at the adult enrichment classes really fast. So if you've ever wanted to look at this, I didn't even know half of these were a thing. We have hip hop dance that's offered. We have dog obedience, take a walk through history. I believe that's taught by Dunya, one of my good friends. Judo for beginners, karate, woodworking intermediate, grant writing 101, Medicare, intro to welding and metal art. Many, many opportunities to enhance your skills. One of the professors here, Berku Sabin, she is a theater faculty member, a very, very distinguished theater writer and director and things. And she took a creative writing course and she said, Shane and Jim, who are the educators for that course, are amazing teachers. They know how to make you write and they strive to make you better. Taking their classes opened up my memories and emotions that I forgot were there. Would recommend to anyone who is willing to dive deep into their life with brand new eyes. And we have a community education email newsletter. All you have to do is go to communityed.csi.edu, give your email and your first and last name, and click sign up. And let's look at this woodworking project. There's also a picture of a woodworking class in here. Let's see exactly how much this would be. So there's a $90 tuition fee and a $25 materials fee. And it is going to be Friday from 6 to 9 and Saturday from 10 to 4 with a one-hour lunch break from 10 to 1 on Saturdays. And it looks like it is going to be on the 16th and 17th. And there are other woodworking projects as well. So you do have to pay for some of these, but or for probably most of them, but they're not full tuition. And they have the opportunity to provide a wide range of skills to people. I know that they also have crocheting classes and knitting classes. I and my wife have looked into other community education course registration opportunities. There's florals and sugar cookie making and fly tying, and these are in the extension campuses as well. So even if you're in Twin Falls, you could go to Burley, Jerome, and the Mini Cassia Center for courses as well. Have a good drive, you know. Nothing is wrong, nothing's wrong with driving. There's also the Workforce Development and Training Center, and they have professional development classes as well as other classes for specific trades. If you thought the Workforce Development and Training was only for, you know, firefighters or police officers or plumbers or electricians, public service people and, and technicians, think again. We have effective business writing, an introduction to SQL, which is SQL, the, the writing. Speed Spanish, the code writing. Uh, we have Discovering Sign Language, Microsoft Excel, Classroom Technology Suite. I'm learning about a lot of these things as well. And at the same time as you are, I didn't know half of these things existed. Well, I didn't know some of these existed until a few minutes ago, but I didn't know that the Workforce Development and Training Center offered these courses until I found out about them and looked at what they had to offer. So please don't assume that you know what is being offered just because you have your preconceived notions of what are, it, it is there. We have a wide range of topics. I wouldn't think that you could have a class on arranging florals. That's just amazing. 
and fluoros can brighten everybody's day. So back to the library specifically, just because it's the summer or you are not a student here, doesn't mean that you can't access our resources and can't have knowledge from our materials. The library is open, as, we have been, as I've been saying in all of these presentations and meetings and open houses and such, to the whole community. We are really here to help as many people as possible. You need a student ID card or a courtesy card, which is $35 per year, to access and check out books or to check out books and access them at home or ebooks. But to come to the library, access our things over the internet or look at our books in person, you do not need any type of access at all. You do not need any type of ID. We only ask that you treat our materials with respect. In most of the areas, there is no food and drink allowed. And please be respectful of other patrons. And you can even use our study room without reserving it, if you would like to as well. For students, and I think actually this might be open to the public, and if it's not right now, we're going to work on making that more accessible, there is a guide to research course. And a lot of faculty members and adjunct professors have their students take this guide to research, which was created by Dave Horalek and has been edited by a wide range of people, but mostly it's Dave who runs this. It's a fantastic way to learn how to use any library resources, library resources, and to fact check your sources and how to look for reliable journals. And so please go read that and please check out our LibGuide. Our LibGuide is available to everybody, even people who aren't students necessarily, although it may go to links that only students can access, but there's still information that we present here that can be used by everybody. The Knowledge Nest Library podcast, which is kind of meta, is available here. We also have information about current displays. We have information about policies and general policies and our policies. We have help on a wide range of topics, help on help, as I've discussed before. And we have student, a student success module. It's about half of the way down. We have 14 pages. We have parenting, research tips, and peer-reviewed articles, wellness, which mental health is just as important as physical health. We have many resources about mental health. Let's read a little bit about the research tips and peer-reviewed articles so you don't forget that in your summer semester, wherever if you're going to a profession or if you're going to back to school again. So we all know how easy it is to search for information in a browser like Google. You can type a question and the computer or the network or whatever you prefer to think of the machine will sort out the search words and the keywords and arrange them in a way that they'll have some sort of results in a way that you will access some resources before others. It's very practical for simple searches, but the algorithms these machines use could be using by, well, they are using biases, but they could be introducing biases into your research and you wouldn't exactly know it. And so this is why it's very important to have the most specific searches and go through multiple pages of the results. Don't just go through one or two or three. You want to go through at least five, maybe even 10. I've even gone through 15 once or more. Because some searches have questionable information, even though they may appear to be legitimate. And so here's a little bit of a list of, of research tips you can use. So research means to research things, or it comes from the French word, and it comes from the French word, to search or to seek, or rechercher. What you should do is use the knowledge that you have, get as many information, data points, or concepts as you have, and use those to guide your search. 
look for information in different formats, not just on the browser. Physical books are wonderful sources of information. Many people don't use them as often as they should. Even I have not used them. I'm a digital initiatives librarian. I don't use physical books as much as I should. I use them, I read them at home, but I don't use them in research as much as I should. Magazines and journals, videos and music, uh, YouTube videos, the internet, of course, are very important and useful, as well as videos produced by professional organizations. And again, people in organizations talk to actual people or actual groups in person, over the phone, via a chat. There are many ways you can look at people and use their institutional knowledge and ask them questions. Keep track of where you looked, what you looked for, the connections between different resources. Use keywords that you find in your your information resources to find other information resources. In other words, search for new concepts that you find in your sources that you want more information on and see how they connect back to your original search topic. Look for citations. Look at the articles in the citations and kind of go on a citation rabbit hole, a controlled citation rabbit hole, but go down and look at all the citations and look at those citations. It's actually kind of fun. And be flexible in what your topic is. If you are looking for sources and you will are firm in exactly what you want to write about, a positive view of a certain type of agriculture, but all you find are negative or contradictory or cautionary sources about a certain type of agriculture, maybe you should change your topic. Maybe you should change your view. Don't be absolutely firm in your topic if you find conflicting sources. Maybe you could write about the conflicting viewpoints. But once you set your topic and you have a firm handle on what the literature says or what information sources say in general or how to map out the differing viewpoints, don't get distracted. Don't branch out too much. And that's kind of where we come in. Dave, Ross, me, all of us here are here to help you find good resources. The library and the information world is a complicated place, but we can help you with a wide range of questions from logistical questions to information about campus to, again, information about topics. So please go to the LibGuide. We have libguides.csi.edu. There are a wide range of topics, and we are anxious to be able to help you. Again, please remember we have the book club in the summer, and we have many, many more activities that we are going to have later in the summer and in the fall when all most of the students come back. So we are very excited. And con again, congratulations on finishing this semester of your academic career. See you next week on The Knowledge Nest.